Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Today, we have three brand new stories, starting with a short one to warm you up. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Company says I tip too high when I travel. When going over my expense report, my company saw I tipped 20% for lunch one afternoon. Lunch was $15, the tip was $3. They told me that's too much because I wouldn't do that with my money. Heck yeah, I do. I just took the better part of an hour of my server's time. The least I could do is leave $3. It's $3 for crying out loud, but rules are rules. However, my company is fairly generous, allowing me $75 a day to spend on food, which I never do. That's about to change. For lunch today, instead of my usual salad or sandwich, I went for the lobster grilled cheese. And of course, upgraded my regular fries to the duck fat fries. Enjoy saving that 5% for the rest of my travel meal expenses. And our second story. I left 40 guys standing in the rain after a 12-hour shift. Up until fairly recently, I worked as a camp bus driver in a major industrial area. What my duties were, were to pick people up from the camp where they live for a certain amount of time. I was two weeks in, one week out, and take them into the plant and drop them off at a variety of drop-off areas, depending on what their job was. Then pick up anyone that was returning to the camp for their rest period. Now there were certain designated areas for the buses to pick up and drop off. You know, a bus stop? and only buses were supposed to be parked in those areas. The issue was that people would keep parking their work pickup in the bus areas and block us off. We kept asking them not to do that, they kept doing it, and eventually it all boiled over when a higher up in the company started giving us crap over picking people up out of the designated areas, because people kept blocking the areas with pickups. We explained why we did it, and the higher up promised to do something about it, but never did. The second time that higher up gave us crap over picking people up out of our designated areas, my manager told us, the bus drivers, that next time this happened, we should let him know via radio and then just leave. So that's what I did. Now we didn't just spring this on our passengers, we made sure that every single one of them knew that the next time it was blocked off, that the bus would just continue on its way and leave them behind. When I spread the news to my passengers, I heard a lot of laughter and could tell they didn't believe me. However, the next day, it happened again. There were pickups in our areas once again, and like the good little minion that I was, I did as I was directed, got on the radio to my manager, let him know what was happening, and left. I understand that there was a number of interesting phone calls afterwards, but we never had a problem with pickups in our areas afterwards. And our last story. They want my money. Oops. In World War II, my uncle Haj was an engineer with the RAF. He rapidly climbed the ranks and ended up being the head engineer at a local base. After the war, he met his wife of 45 years, Eve. It was the typical post-war relationship, without children though, due to complications. He quickly found a job at our village coal mine, known locally as the Pit. He went from engineer to foreman very quickly. The man had a knack for leadership, that's for sure. He and Eve, some of his RAF buddies and his sister, my grandmother, often went to Spain for holidays, at least once a year before they all retired. After that, they went whenever they felt like it. The family. The unfortunate truth is that family isn't always nice. My grandmother was his only surviving direct family. Eve, on the other hand, had a large family, very large. The trouble with large families is that often there's a few bad eggs. In this case, it was quicker to count the good ones. As Hodge would put it, the trouble with eggs is you can only tell the good ones by spinning them quick or dunking them in water. I don't fancy going to prison. More often than not, Eve's family would drop by and ask to borrow money, not from Eve, she had none. Hodge had always been industrious, saving as much as he could, and only really spending what he had to, other than the holidays, of course. The Incident when I hit 18, legal drinking age in the UK, he took me for my first beer as my dad worked nights and had to sleep. He didn't drink, which was uncommon for him as he was a regular at the working men's club we were in. Me. Hodge, how come you're not drinking? I can't in good conscience drink your money without you getting a sniff. Hodge. Well, I suppose one can't hurt. Don't tell Nip, his name for my grandmother, Sheila, but I've just been diagnosed with diabetes type 2, 
I don't want to take my chances. Me. I'll keep your secret, but you need to tell her just on the off chance. Hodge. I'll tell her in good time, kiddo. Now get it down you before it goes flat. Neither of us took much notice to the people around us, so we didn't notice Eve's nephew in the corner. Five years pass. I've seen him a few more times, less than I'd like because of work and him going overseas. The build-up. I visited my grandparents one day to find my grandmother sobbing with Hodge sitting on the sofa. Hodge, put the kettle on, kid. I need to tell you something. I make a coffee for Gran and Granddad, hot chocolate for me, and green tea for Hodge. Hodge, now listen up. I've not got long on this wretched planet, but you're not going to cry over me. I've been diagnosed with late-stage cancer and couldn't be effing happier to be leaving. To Gran, sorry, Nip. I know you don't want to hear this, but it has to be said. You and yours will be looked after, of course, but you're not to tell Eve and her family. To everyone, I've made up a new will. I want everyone to go to the reading. I've prepared a little gift for the family. Shortly after this chat, we found out he passed away. The Revenge We went to the reading as a family like he'd asked. It's the only thing he ever asked of us. We'd seen people we'd never met, never even heard of, so of course there were some sullen scowls across the table. Lawyer. Now that we're all here, please watch this video. Haj has a message for you all. Haj from beyond. Now then, I imagine this will be a shock to most of you, but I had cancer. If you're watching this, I want you to know that some of you made my last few years pleasant. Others, well, we'll get to you. To my side of the family. Not one of you came to me asking if I was all right or wanted anything doing. Instead, you asked if I wanted a hand with anything. For this, I thank you. I've never had anyone do anything for me unless they were my underlings in the RAF, and I didn't aim to start when I found out I was on my way out. You knew me better than most of my close family. I'll tell you if something's wrong. Good on you. Now then, let's get to the good bit. To Eve's family. You lot, where do I begin? When I took our Nip's grandson out for his first pint, apparently the walls have ears, and one of you overheard me tell him I had diabetes. Shame you had to say, it's a shame it wasn't cancer. Guess you got your wish, huh? The rest of you, whenever you visited me, you asked more often than not if you could borrow money. It's fine, I didn't mind lending it to you, but I did expect to get it back. So here's how this is going to work. I've split my money and put it in trust with my oldest friend, the lawyer. Nobody's getting a thing till Eve pops her clog, so don't bother asking. Eve can stay in the house I worked my butt off for until she either dies or has to go into care for any reason. The house is not to be sold until after she dies. Lazy as she is, she's still my wife. Once she dies, the house is to be sold at a reasonable price to the next owners, and the money from that is to be added to the total for my finances and split with the family. Eve's is her own, she can do with it what she wants, other than add it to my total. Lawyers left instructions on this. Now here's how it'll be split. If you've borrowed money from me and paid it back, you'll get a fair share based on your age at the time of my death. If you haven't repaid the money you borrowed, you'll still get a cut minus what you owe me. For some of you, I hope you know I'm laughing at your squirming from beyond the grave. Deserves you right. Nip, my only living family, you'll get the lion's share of whatever's there to be done with what you will. If you're not wanting to keep it, lawyer's been paid for any services you may require. Trust him, he's a good lad and saved my butt on more than one occasion in the war. Nip's sons will get a decent chunk to help with whatever you need and your children will be provided for as well. To my mom, not once have I heard anything bad about you, you're getting a cut too, like it or lump it. OP, you've been a great help the last couple of weeks. I called you unfairly at 3 a.m. to help me out of the bath after finally giving up getting myself out. Sorry you had to see that. You didn't have to help the next day with the decorating either, if you weren't already on your career path, you'd make a fine tradesman. You'll receive a cut to be determined by the near future's events. Use it how you will. To the rest of you, I am utterly effing disgusted to have known you. I mentioned earlier that Eve can live in the house till she dies or is put into residential care. If either of these happens, nobody is to live in the house. I don't want anyone I don't trust in there. Now quit your crying and go on about your lives. Hodge. As you can imagine, people kicked up a stink about this. We nodded to the lawyer and left. Shortly after the funeral, Eve went into a retirement home with her own money. Hodges was locked up as per his request. She had more than enough to keep her afloat for many more years. A couple months down the line, we all got called back to the lawyer's office a little bemused. Again, we're directed to watch a video. Hodge. 
I'm not surprised that this video has been played. Some of you just don't follow orders. If you're watching this, it means that someone I don't trust was found living in my house. I don't give a F who it is. Lawyer has instructions of what to do next. But for the sake of his voice and sanity, whoever was found in the house against my wishes is now stricken from the will entirely. If the others feel they want to share their money with you, that's their loss. You'll not get a penny from me. As it turns out, my cousin, who bullied me in school, and her family, as in her on-and-off boyfriend, two kids and a dog, had moved into the house after convincing Eve to move out because they needed the house. What they hadn't counted on is nosy neighbors. Hodge asked them to watch the house, and if they saw anyone new in there or any signs of moving, to report to the lawyer for updates. In return, they'd get a cut of the money he had. They're good people. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.